Hey there, this is Mr. Wells, and in today's video we will be discussing the process of heat transfer, an incredibly important concept which we'll be referencing numerous times when we talk about the earth sciences. The individual processes of heat transfer that we're going to discuss in this video, conduction, convection, and radiation, are things that you experience and utilize in your everyday life. For example, you utilize these processes when you cook. On a macro scale, these processes operate on entire earth systems over both large and small time scales. For example, these processes drive major earth system processes below the surface, in the oceans, in the atmosphere, and even in the vacuum of space. Let's get started. Okay, so the first type of heat transfer that we're going to discuss in this video is conduction. Conduction is heat transfer by molecular contact. I'd say this is the simplest form of heat transfer. If you look at the set of dots here on the page, imagine you have some warm molecules that are interacting with cooler ones. We know that heat is going to be transferred always from warmer objects to colder objects. So over time, the warmer objects here on the bottom are going to directly transfer heat to the cooler objects that were on top. Um, that's, direct, that's an example of direct molecular interaction. We can think about a couple of real-world examples. So this first image that I have up here on the top right, um, which is showing a pot of boiling water, obviously. Um, this pot of boiling water is actually describing all three forms of heat transfer, uh, but specifically conduction is when objects like metals, which often make for really phenomenal conductors, are able to quickly transfer heat through their entire structure. Um, this is why, so there's a cover on this, on this pot because you know that the handle of a pot can get really hot when it's boiling underwater, even if the handle of the pot isn't directly under the heat source. Another example uh, would be on a sandy beach. Have you ever wondered why it's really painful to walk across a sandy beach, even though other objects maybe in that area are not as hot to the touch? Um, it's because sand is another good example of a conductor. Uh, when you step on it yourself, you are directly transferring heat from your foot. Uh, this is a perfect example of conduction at work. Um, there are uh, opposites to the, the idea of good conductors, though. Some objects, such as wood, rubber, wool, and glass, are examples of really poor conductors. We call those objects that are poor conductors insulators. Okay, moving on, the next process of heat transfer that we will discuss is the process of convection. Convection is arguably the most important to understand in an Earth system's context. Convection is the process of heat transfer through differences in density. So whereas conduction, and I know those words are pretty similar, conduction, convection, sometimes I get those mixed up myself, um, but one way to, think, to keep track of those is that, you know, conduction occurs mostly in solids, that's what we were just talking about. Convection primarily occurs in fluids such as liquids and gases. Uh, convection occurs everywhere. It occurs in molten magma below our feet, in the oceans, and in the atmosphere. It's obviously going to be something that's going to be really important as we move on in earth science. Going back to our pot of boiling water uh, example for a second, so conduction, remember, was that, you know, the handle of this pan getting really hot because that the molecules were directly interacting, the metal was conducting the heat from the heat source really well. The process of convection, we're going to focus on the actual water itself. And so what's going to happen is that you have your heat source down here, and some of that water here at the bottom is going to start to heat up, and it's going to become less dense, and because it's less dense, it's going to rise. And we see that as that you know, it manifests itself as the bubbles that we see on the top of the pot of water. What's going to happen is that some of these uh, water molecules are going to start to either be lost to the atmosphere or they're going to potentially cool off. And in that case, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to have a complete convection cell. And so, again, in a convection cell, this is a simplistic model, but you're going to have a heat source here at the bottom. That object, whatever it is, the fluid is going to get less dense and it's going to rise up. And as it gets to the top, it's going to become more dense. It's going to cool and become more dense and sink down to the bottom. And so you're going to have a complete cell. Um, this is something that we'll obviously look back on uh, when we talk about things like atmospheric processes and geologic processes. Something that you see every day, uh, the process of cloud formation, is typically driven by convection. Um, so in this example, warm air is heated from the ground and begins to rise. We call these warming, warm rising air pockets thermals. As warm air rises, it expands because air pressure decreases at higher altitudes. So as the convection process continues upwards, air cools, and it might actually reach the point where water vapor condenses and forms clouds. So that's an example of convection operating on an Earth system process specifically. Finally, we're going to discuss radiation, which is heat transfer by the acceleration of charged particles, or wave motion. 
Radiation is a type of heat transfer that can even happen in the vacuum of space as electromagnetic radiation from the sun can travel to faraway objects such as us here on the earth 93 million miles away. In the pot of boiling water example that we've been using, radiation would just be, I mean, it would, it's really simple. It'd be the, the flame that's created by the gas. It's the heat source. Radiation is something that you can feel. If you're standing by a campfire, you're going to feel hot even if you aren't directly next to it. Every object that has a temperature emits some form of radiation. In the case of a roaring fire, you can feel this intensely. Uh, the visible light that's produced by your heat source can clearly show you the energy emitted by the object. Uh, here I'll pull up a kind of cheesy example, but in the example with the fire, you're getting a lower level of radiation. You can kind of see this, it manifests itself in the color. You're seeing the radiation by observing the color. Um, and in the case of the fire here, it's kind of hard to see, but you've got a blue flame, so you're getting that higher energy radiation. So that would be the example that we look at for radiation. You can think of the sun, you can think of a direct heat source, that's something that we can create. Uh, but radiation is a direct heat source. All right, let's say I'm out here in this grassy field. I'm enjoying life. I've got a blanket out. I'm enjoying a nice picnic uh, in my happy place, basically, outdoors. And I start to think about uh, the coolest thing in the world, earth science and processes of heat transfer. Uh, and so I'm thinking, what kind of processes of heat transfer am I seeing out here in the real world? And it actually turns out I'd be seeing all three. Um, for example, you'd have electromagnetic radiation coming down from the sun. Uh, that electromagnetic radiation is going to directly heat up myself. It's going to heat up everything around me, including the ground. Uh, the ground is what we'll focus on. So I look at the ground, and we're having a second process of heat transfer, which is conduction. So the warm ground, the grass, the ground, every, every, surface, on the, every surface on the surface of the earth uh, is going to have some form of heat, and that heat is going to directly interact with molecules in the lower part of the atmosphere. Uh, and so you're going to conduct heat into the atmosphere through the ground. And then I have the process of convection because what happens is that warm air mass is going to rise. It's going to rise up to the point where it cools, contracts, and that's how you're forming some of the clouds that you're seeing out into the distance. So I've got all three uh, heat transfer processes going on right here in this picture. Okay, here's another example that I'd like you to try. Now this is basically the same as our pot of boiling water example, so this should be really easy uh, if you've been following along in the video here. Um, but what I'd like you to do is try to pause the video for a second and see if you can guess which letters are showing us convection, conduction, and radiation. They're only used once. Okay, so to go over these, A uh, was the process of convection. Um, so that's, for example, when warm water rises and then cools. So you have heat transfer through a fluid. B was our radiation. That was just waves of electromagnetic radiation that are emitted by the fire. And then C is conduction. So that was, I grabbed that really hot uh, handle of the pan uh, because you have heat that's uh, directly transferring through the metal, basically, through molecular uh, collisions, interactions. All right, so we've talked about a lot of Earth system scale interactions of heat transfer in this video. Let's end with an example of the most important thing on planet Earth, which is obviously pizza. Wood fire pizza is incredible, and it's interesting as it's cooked through all three types of heat transfer. Uh, in this example, you have radiation as direct wave energy being emitted by the fire. You have conduction as the molecules that make up the pizza are making direct contact with those heated bricks below. And finally, as a result of the oven's design, you have convecting air circulating throughout the oven. Hopefully you can see now the importance of heat transfer, both from the context of things as complex as the Earth's system, as well as things as simple as a campfire, a pot of boiling water, or even a pizza, things you're going to see in your everyday life. The concepts of conduction, convection, and radiation are going to permeate through your entire study of science. Hopefully this video helped to provide a basic understanding of what these types of heat transfer actually do. Have a great day everyone, uh, and thanks for watching.